It appears that I hit 1,000 subscribers. Oh my fucking god, guys. Honestly, thank you so much. From, like, the bottom of my heart. I really cannot believe that this happened. Like, seriously, it's it's incredible. And, you know what? No. Th this isn't a me thing. You guys did this. You guys are the ones who make up that number, not me. We did it, guys. We hit the big 1,000. To celebrate, I made this tips video by request of the community. Let's jump right into it. Here are 10 tips for basic mood management in RoomWorld 1.0. This first tip is for early on in the game, like literally the moment the columns spawn into the map. You're going to want to build their bedrooms as quickly as you can. Make sure you have someone doing the initial farming as well, because you don't want to get behind on food, but also make sure to focus on getting their bedrooms built. Having these nice bedrooms built early on will ensure a good mood for your core colonists. If you can't get their entire room built right away, that's fine, just make sure the bed is at least built because colonists hate sleeping on the ground. You know, come to think about it. To be honest, I would too, because, you know, fuck sleeping on the ground. That sucks. The second tip on this list is directly related to the first tip. Try to make the beginning bedrooms at least of dull quality. This will ensure that there aren't any mood debuffs from a bad room. To be clear though, I am ignoring the cramped debuff, and I will get to that later in this video. Anyway, a good room for each colonist helps so much with moods, it's crazy. If you ever are having issues with moods, first check if their recreation is being fulfilled, and then check to see if their rooms are at least dull quality or better. At least, that's my go-to checklist. Tip number three is also directly related to the past two tips. But, uh, you know, I kind of said fuck it. So anyway, these past two tips have just been, like, right off the bat improvements. And this tip is, has to do with the whole uh, cramped mood debuff, okay? So it's it's better to get this done as early as possible, okay? So the way to get rid of the, the cramped debuff is you're going to want to eventually expand each of your colonist rooms to at least an 8x8 size. Because doing so will get rid of the cramped debuff, obviously. And it will allow for much better overall room impressiveness. Of course, this also depends on what you need to put into the room. Like, for example, if the room is empty except for a bed, then the room won't have as many benefits as, say, a room with a table, a chair, a bed, and a plant pot. Tip number four is a simple one. Build a chair in front of each production table. Doing this results in two things, very important things. One, a sustained comfort boost throughout the day, and two, faster workflow. Actually, come to think of it, just chairs alone are a good tip? What the fuck am I thinking? A weird way to make a room more impressive is literally just filling with dining chairs. I'm not joking, I'm serious. Look at this. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, scratch no tip number four. Make this tip number four, 2.0. Build chairs everywhere. I'm joking. If you really want to partially cheat the system, though, you can fill the colonist bedrooms with dining chairs and it makes them happy. I don't know why, but it, it works. Oh boy. Okay, so I have a huge problem with forgetting recreational items, especially early on in the game. No matter how many times I tell myself to make a simple horseshoe pin in the beginning of the game, I always forget. So tip number five may sound stupid. Okay, you know what? It is stupid, but I'm saying it anyway. Make a goddamn horseshoe pin right away when you first start your colony. Believe me, it helps so much. On to the topic of statues. There are three types of statues in RimWorld, small, large, and grand. Small statues offer a decent boost to impressiveness in a room, and a large statue offers an even bigger bonus to impressiveness. But the, the thing is between the small and the large statues is they're the exact same size, but they have different names for their size. So I, I, don't, I, I don't know why that's a thing, All right, because I literally have no idea why it's a thing. But anyway, the grand statue is much larger than the small and large statues, and offers an even bigger bonus to impressiveness. So tip number six is build large statues in every colonist's rooms. The reason for this is because it doesn't take up a lot of room, and it offers a big boost to impressiveness. To carry on the topic of statues, tip number seven is be sure to build statues and plant pots in places that your colonists frequently visit. This will keep their mood boosted throughout the workday. Think about it. What if you walked by the Mona Lisa every day? What if you had an amazing sculpture of your favorite pet in the hallway outside your room? I guess I can't really speak for you, but for me, I guess I'd be very happy. I think it'd be pretty fucking dope. Tip number eight is a big one. Every colony needs a dining room. So when you're making the dining room, make sure it's very impressive. Make a bunch of chairs, make a bunch of tables, make a bunch of statues. Hell, make a bunch of grand sculptures. Because why not? I mean, it's a giant room. You might as well fit a grand sculpture or two into it. Every colonist gets a decent sized mood boost over an impressive dining room anyway. And I'm telling you right now to make sure your colony eventually gets a dining room. Especially before late game, do it as early as possible within reason. 
So, do you remember tip number five? Always build a horseshoe pin when your colony starts? Well, this is kind of along that topic. T tip number nine is quite important, actually. Mid to late game, you're going to want to build a rec room, all right? A rec room is basically just a large room full of recreation things, like chess tables, pool tables, poker tables, horseshoe pins too, I guess, etc. All you really need is a rec room with a few statues, a chess table, and a pool table. If you want more than that, go right ahead. Also, keep in mind that a rec room and a diving room do not have to be separate from each other. You can actually combine the two to create a dupe. Duplex, I guess? Is that the right word? Duplex? I I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. A dining rec room? Something like that? <laughs> I don't know. The dining and rec room, though, they, they'd be in the same room together, but the colonists would get the same mood bus if, if, if they were, like, separate from each other. Plus, it saves space. Tip number 10. We fucking made it, guys! We did it! Well, I guess you did, because you're the wonderful person watching my video, and I love you, thank you. Anyway... Tip number 10 is produce some fine meals. Fine meals offer a mood boof. Fine meals offer a mood boof. Boof. Yeah, I just said boof, guys. God damn. I need to learn how to speak English. Anyway, that is, it, the mood buff is decently sized and definitely worth the effort to make. And to be honest, you don't even need a lot of them. Just a few. Even if you make enough fine meals for every colonist to eat, that's still at least one less colonist mental state that you don't have to worry about if there's like a bunch of issues with... Like, I don't know, fucking mental breakdowns. Like, you won't have to worry about that person for pretty much for sure, because they're going to have a higher mood than the rest of them. So anyway, that was my 10 tips for the basic mood management in RimWorld. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please go check out my other tips videos. I recommend my defense guide, as it will help you survive in the long run. Anyway, leave a like, and hit that fucking subscribe button. You know you love me, and see you next time.